So welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AED744. So today, guys, we do our Copa America Group A reaction. So we're going to start with the Peru, Canada. And then we're going to do the Chile, Argentina. This game comes down to clinicality. And that was the difference on the day. Because it was crazy to me in that first half about how dominant uh, Peru were. Peru were actually cooking Canada. Canada were struggling that first half. And I was concerned for Canada. I was like, they were so bad. They only created one shot. And it was kind of a misplaced pass. But that's pretty much it. Canada hardly did anything that first half. It was so pathetic, you know. Um, a huge save from Quisape. Big, big save there. Uh, La Padula had a great effort there at the 10th minute. Uh, the 45th minute. And uh, Flora is there. But the thing with Peru is that they were so bad. Uh, they were so bad when it came to goal-scoring chances. Now, we get to a controversial moment in this game. And I believe this is the 40th minute. Should a red card have been given? Because for me, it's a red card offense. He clearly had butted the other player. I believe it was um, I believe it was a left back uh, Johnston. That should have been a red card, in my opinion. And the fact it wasn't given is crazy to me. It's shocking. And then the second half continues. And you have to give credit to Jesse Marsh because he knew this team was tactically struggling and he made some big changes at halftime, which is very bold. Made a triple change at halftime. He brought in Miller, he brought in Shavelsburg and Orzario. He was saying that, you know what? Where I know we're I know we're lucky to not be behind, so let me make these changes for us to have an impact. Then it comes to that big decision. For me, it is a definite red card. I don't know what Araujo was doing at Shovelberg. It made no sense. It was completely unnecessary, and a, a, a red card was given. A red card was given, and you can see this is where Canada start to really gel because we're, we're obviously Peru have now a man disadvantage, and this is where Canada really started to come alive. You know, and this is where Canada really started to come alive. Lauren had that chance. There's a 67th minute. And you can start to see the cracks are starting to show. And then obviously, um, you know, it was starting to show there. But you can tell for Peru, they were really struggling attacking-wise. Once that that, goal, that, um, that red card was given. And then they finally, and then Peru, and then finally, a great ball from Schaffelberg to Jonathan David scores brilliantly. 74th minute, and it's a vital, vital goal. Vital goal. Peru tried to get back in the game with some brilliant efforts there. Acueva there in the 91st minute, brilliant save for Crapu. Uh, Guerrero there, 95th minute, was a great save there. Uh, Carlo was close, and this is where Canada just were clinical. And Canada just had the clinical edge for this one. And the thing with Canada is that they should have scored. They should have scored this chance. I don't know how Canada didn't make a 2-0 right there. Oh, yes, and a. They should have scored that and right here this moment right here. And so for Canada, as I said, man, it's a critical, critical win because you look at the group right now. Argia did them a solid favor by beating Chile. So for Canada now, it's simple. All you need to do is just get a draw against Chile. You're in the quarterfinals of the Copa America. You don't even have to win for that one. So for uh, Canada, they're in a great position. And for Peru, as I said, it's pretty much hopeless for Peru because they are final games against Argentina. And even though RG have already secured quarterfinals, it's still going to be difficult to beat Argentina. And we see how bad Peru has been in goal scoring wise. And yeah, I actually think Peru actually played a good game, but it's just that Crepu came up clutch. Crepu came up clutch, and that's the important three points for them. So yeah, you you have to give credit to Crepu. I think Crepu was man of the match. I think Schaffelberg as well. Schaffelberg coming off the bench was amazing. And honestly, I think he should be a starter for Canada. He should start. I think he should be starting instead of come on, instead of Miller there. And yeah, I think for Canada, man. Fantastic win for them. Amazing win for them. And just think for Canada, they, they could be a force. They could be a force to be reckoned with, guys. They could be a force to be reckoned with in the Copa America. But yeah, for Peru, as I said, man, their attack is garbage. Their attack is garbage. I've, as those people coming into this one, you cannot be, be relying on La Padula, Flores, and Guerrero. These guys are completely too old. They're washed. And yeah, it, it's a shame because I actually think Peru actually played a decent game. It's just they weren't clinical, and that's ultimately the difference. So, it is what it is. Another game where another team should have been more clinical was Chile versus Argentina. Guys, Chile in this game were awful. You could tell that Chile were playing for a draw. They had everything in their minds to play for a draw. And Claudio Bravo was having a masterclass in goal. Masterclass in goal. The amount of saves Claudio Bravo did in this game is unbelievable. The guy is like four years old, and he's making like seven saves as Absolutely mind-boggling to me. I mean, just look at the st stats right here, guys. First half. Look how many shots RG had. 12 shots, 3 on target. They should have scored some of those chances. Alvarez there, 22nd minute. McAllister, 39th. Gonzalez, 
You know, there were so many chances RJ created that first half. Chile had no chances. No, I mean, look at even look at the XG right here, guys. Chile had nothing that first half. Absolutely abysmal. Alvarez, so many chances missed. On the side, RJ really upped it up. This is where they started to take control. And man, the amount of saves. Los Celso right there. McAllister, 57th. Romero, 82nd. Martinez, 95th. Uh, Martinez, Martinez, Gonzalez. Like, the amount of shots Argentina had in this game was unbelievable. Chile did have their few chances here and there, but it was very, very tame. It was really straight up Emmy Martinez. And then finally, at the 95th minute, 80th, 88th minute, Lautaro Martinez comes off the bench and scores a goal. Fantastic goal for Lautaro. It, it kind of took a little, um, you know, it, come up, it was kind of a scrubby goal from the corner situation. But it is a goal nonetheless. There was a long VAR check to make sure the goal was stand or not. And the goal was given. And that's how it ended, man. So for Argentina, man, a crucial three points. Amazing for them. And guys, RJ just, they look so close control. The counterattack they put, the counterattacking they go on. Their attack is lethal. The defense is great. Um, it's just RJ have to improve the finishing. Pretty much the same thing that we saw against Canada. Their, their finishing was poor. As ultimately let them down. And this kind of game... Pretty much the same thing here. As for Chile, it's pretty much really, really looking bad because now they go in the next game against Canada, pretty much having to win that game. They have to win that game, and obviously RG will also play against Peru at the same time. Saturday is going to be interesting, guys. That's going to be a big, big two games, guys. Huge one, and yeah, man, it should be interesting to see what takes place there because we're going to have, uh, we're going to find out whether Canada or Chile will progress because let's be real, I think it's kind of over for Peru. I think it's over for Peru. So yeah, for Argentina, man, congratulations to them. They're in the quarterfinals. They're most likely top the group as well. And they'll, of course, play the Group B runner-up. And so for Chile, as I said, man, they almost pulled off the miracle result because, fun fact for you guys, this is the first time Chile ever lost to Argentina in... Uh, actually, no. Sorry. Uh, take back what I said. Argentina finally got revenge for the Copa America after, you know, losing against them in the 2015-2016. So uh, technically, they got revenge in the third place right there. RGO finally uh, gets revenge in a proper match, a group stage match. So if you guys did enjoy this video, um, please remember to like and subscribe, of course. And let me know if there's any major target points in the comments below. And yeah, I'll see you guys later. Peace out.